look what I have here. A classic gyro here in Athens, Greece. I'm so excited to eat one of these, show you the beauty of this sandwich that people enjoy all around this country. Perfect, perfect street food, perfect quick food, perfect late night bite as well. But I have something to eat right before it. So before we eat this beautiful skewered meat dish, we're going to enjoy an appetizer, some fried cheese, and we have dessert, some baklava. So join me for a meal as we eat some gyros. Now the location I went to is this one, right here. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so for all the fellow Greeks, let me know how to pronounce it right over here. Hey, Mirna, nice to see you here. So I'm right by all the ancient sites. Yeah, the ancient sites are actually right behind me. The ancient Agora, the Acropolis is within walking distance. There's a lot of great stuff here to see. Um, and also there's music playing behind me because there's always buskers in this area. Very, very vibrant area. Usually open very, very late night. Um, so we're gonna enjoy a good gyro, which I'm so excited to show all of you. So, mmm. Oh, it looks so good. So let me show you how it's made. So gyro, very similar to Middle Eastern shawarma, and also has some similarities to tacos a pastor in Mexico. It is a skewered meat. Right over there, you see it slowly moving through by the fire. Lena says the food looks so good. It does. So let's try first. Here they have a sparkling water. I found this all around in major restaurants in Greece. Suroti from 1916 and the sparkling water comes from let's see where does it come from I don't see it I don't see the name but I will let you know once I find out and here is this so let's take a bite into this and see how it is and then we'll bite into the yido so I got two pairs of fork and knife because I'm going to require a different one for that baklava which we see right over here and this is the oh interesting oh this is interesting this is the fried cheese look at that the fried cheese let's try this out Beautiful views. This is what I love about uh, many parts of Athens. You, you eat in really pleasant surroundings. Really pleasant surroundings. It's not like New York where you really have to go to a specific neighborhood to find a small little street where you're not really bothered and there's not too much hustle and bustle. But here, aside from some brooming, there is uh, very little hustle and bustle. You're not surrounded by a very crammed kind of uh, lounge streets, at least from what I've come to in this touristic area of Athens. Let's try this out. Mmm! Mmm! Whoa! This is very good. Immediately, I get the taste of the fried. So it definitely has, definitely has a, that fried quality to it. But now, Jotas, am I having saganaki? Yes, I am indeed having saganaki. I am indeed having saganaki. And it's really, really good. It's um definitely chewy. Lots of, lots to chew. But it is very delicious and the cheese has a very soft taste to it, very crumbly. So I really like it. Let's try it out with a little bit of lemon. So I squeezed a little bit of lemon on it, which it comes accompanied with. Let's try it out. Mm. So as fields, you ask if it's fried, but not greasy. That's exactly the case. So being from Puerto Rico, we usually have a fried, Excuse me. Excuse me. 
inhaled a little bit of cheese. Being from Puerto Rico, we have a little bit of, um, we have a fried cheese, but it tends to be very greasy. This one's very light on um, grease. It has no greasiness at all, uh, but yet it's still that fried goodness. Switch seats. <coughs> Be careful, don't talk and eat at the same time. That's a hazard on the job of um, someone who does the occasional mukbangs on this on the uh, YouTube. You might inhale your food by mistake. All right, let me switch seats because I have lighting is all crazy here. <laughs> and I'm not red because of uh, any uh, sunburn, it's because of the uh, location. We have a cat approaching. I move. All right, there we go. That's a lot better. <laughs> now I'm well lit. Don't let the gyros cool, says TA. I'm digging in right now. So, what is a gyro? Gyro, if you want to be very American. This is very popular in many parts of the world. In America, we know them as gyros, or you might have a kebab in UK. But this is the Greek version. Pork gyro with some french fries, a huge heaping of tzatziki sauce, which is a yogurt-based sauce, some tomatoes, and some onions all with beautifully juicy slices of pork that are much thicker than you usually slice of pork. So let's take our first bite. Nothing beats a good gyro with people watching here in Athens. Thank you so much, Kyle. Some danger money for the job. Thank you so much for the for supporting me. The emergency fund when it comes to doing a, a live video of eating public mastication. So the pita is so soft and you know, I sometimes don't like pita because in, in America pita can be very, very heavy. I usually prefer a little bit of the lighter breads that some other Middle Eastern countries use, but that's in America. I'm not sure what they do different with their pita here, but it is softer, it goes down easier. It might be because it's a little bit less processed, maybe. Uh, also the pita always is slightly cooked so they slightly toast it. What I like is about the meat itself. A gyro, a gyro, usually in New York, has very thinly sliced meat. I'm not sure if that's a style from a different part of Greece, but here the meats have a thicker cut to them. Delicious. Or in Greek, telia. It's perfect. Perfect gyro. Doreen says it's too thick. I've gotten that comment from a few times. Doreen, let us know. And for anyone who might think it's too thick, let, let us know why. I actually really like that it's a little bit thicker cut. Uh, I, I appreciate American gyro, uh, gyros, but the meat sometimes tastes a little bit too processed. And since it's so thin, and it's almost like a ham. Of course, it's not cured by no means, but I like I like this thicker cut. To me, it tastes more like a shawarma, and that's why I like about the gyros here. Now, the fries add some great texture to it. Hmm.
great texture to the fries. The fries here, very soft. Very soft, very crunchy. Mm. These fries are definitely pretty damn fresh. They don't taste like uh, fast food fries by no means. So pretty fresh, pretty thick cut, and you can taste the creaminess of the potato. Mm. I wonder where they get their potatoes from. Is, are the fries greasy? No, no, not at all. So I'm squeezing it right now. Very little grease on my hands. Nowhere near as much as uh, American fry could get and not as salty either just lightly salted but I wonder where they get their potatoes from because the potatoes remind me a lot of the potatoes from Finland I was so blown away by the Finnish potatoes they also had that kind of creamy texture to it um, in America sometimes the potatoes can be I don't know, a little bit more a little bit more rougher you know, when you uh, bite into a Shake Shack fry, it's very different. Hey, Ronda says, Bon Appetit. Let us know how to say Bon Appetit in uh, Greek. Uh, Ronda, thank you so much for tuning in. There's a fly who really wants the disease cream. It's probably dry, says Babu. So the reason I chose this place, A, it was recommended to me by a Greek um, I had a lovely tour by a man named Thanasis who runs a tour called First Day in Athens on Airbnb experiences. Check him out. Search First Day in Athens or, or you'll see it pop up in the list of Athenian experiences. Really cool guy. Really mind-blowing tour. Uh, I took the tour because I really wanted to get orient myself in the city uh, because the language system is different. And the city is a lot more hectic in its design than, say, uh, Paris or, or, or even Mexico City. It's much more hectic. So that tour really helped me kind of navigate better here. And he took us at the end of the tour. After his job was done, uh, we had so much fun that he took me and the group here. And I was blown away that we had a great gyro. Were very inexpensive right next to the main ancient sites so the total of this was 18 euro 18 euro i spent quite a lot um and i think the most expensive thing by far in this menu is this gigantic baklava i got it for the video i would not have had this if i were eating alone uh, because i'm pretty full from my earlier meal but A, this block of all looks great, and B, I, I need to show you at least one block of block throughout this trip. And this one seems like it takes the cake, no pun intended. This one was the most expensive item on the menu. This was $6.90, and the reason it's so expensive is because it's for like four people. <laughs> this is not one, this is not a one person baklava. It was a four person baklava. The gyro compared is way less inexpensive, uh, which I'll pull out the receipt right now. Uh, Roel says, sharing is caring. Wendy says, LOL. Uh, Greek food has beautiful spices and you can smell them through the streets. Indeed you can, indeed you can. And we have a cat. Oh, yeah. We need a doggy bag, yes. PayPal, for, uh, oh the cat's looking, he wants a little, little piece of baklava. Can cats eat honey and walnuts? Do let me know. Because I'm not going to eat this whole baklava. But I will eat more sun right So if you see the guys passing through me, I actually 
sat by the cleaning area. I did not know it was the cleaning area. And this is more of a to-go place, so you can easily buy your stuff to go. Um, the cat will probably need, not eat baklava. Sylvia says, I will eat baklava. All right, good to know. Is there any pickles in the gyro? No. I haven't seen pickles really offered anywhere. So I don't think it's a Greek thing. It might be a New York thing. Is, it, is that sweet cake? Yes. Yes, it is. It's a sweet cake. Uh, great question. Uh, Matt, great question. That looks like a good yudo. It is a great yudo. Really enjoying this. So I'm gonna eat the rest of this yido and um, and then try a, a small piece of this baklava. So let's let's enjoy the rest of this yido. Zeus and all the gods because this is one great Yudo. And also we are in the Orthodox country so praise Jesus as well. There in the Pantheon along with Zeus is a great great Yudo. I think they will all enjoy a good dinner together if they were all to hang out. Zeus, Jesus, Dionysus, Virgin Mary, all of them. One big party they would have these yidos, at least if they were visiting Greece. Pickles is like a Jewish-Israeli thing. Yes, so you'll find yidos in Israeli culture, but it might go by a different name. It might be kebab. Let me know what's the Israeli name for the pita sandwich with meat in it. Let me know. Hey Ava, nice to see you here. When I lived in the Bronx, I, I got to love baklava. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Greeks, the largest Greek population outside of the main city of Athens was New York City. Athens grew, it exponentially grew in the past like 30 or 40 years. For, for, for a few, a decade or two, there was m more Greeks in New York City than there were in any other city outside of Athens. More than Thessaloniki, more than any other city in Athens, more than Sparta, whatever. There were more Greeks there. Blows my mind. And the thing is, I learned that there is a New York diner here in the middle of Athens. And it's because it's one of those Greeks that had a New York diner over there in New York City and came back to the motherland and decided to open up the New York Diner here. So I'm very tempted to maybe give that a try and see how it is a New York Diner in the middle of Athens. But that's why, that's why a lot of this food feels familiar. You can't really, um, I think, escape that if you're from New York. Amazing to see the action behind you, yes. Oh yes, I always know how to pick my frames. Susie says, please do. And it's great to see, you know, as you travel more, it's great to see more connections between my home city of New York and other cities. I saw that in Mexico uh, with all the amazing food. I saw that in, um, in Paris with urban design, with architecture. And I saw that here, now I'm seeing that here with the yidos and the food and, and uh, the baklava and these other things that we really associate um, with New York in a different context. I really love traveling for that, for, in that way. It's really, uh, really awesome. And New York is one of a kind, but I bet you can do that with a lot of other cities. Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco. I bet you could do that with a big portion of new US cities in some regard.
when we were in Greece, there was lamb or goat. Yep, it's mostly lamb. Actually, yeah, it's mostly lamb here. Uh, no, actually not mostly lamb. Most of the gyros are pork. Uh, but the, the cheese is lamb or goat. Or sheep or goat, actually. Susie says, in my limited travel, you found that to be true. Cheers to that, Susie. The sparkling water is amazing. Is there a Greek version of McDonald's as Ronald? Excuse me. Great question, Ronald. I don't know. I don't know. Any of the Greek viewers, Vasilios or Panagiotis, let us know. Is there a Greek version of McDonald's? Uh, I do know that there's the Greek version of Starbucks, which is Coffee Island, and it's really good. I really enjoy Coffee Island. It's actually a really exceptional cup of coffee. I, I was really surprised for a uh, chain. Are there no movie theaters? That's what I was wondering. I did not see any major movie theaters. Might be because we're in very historic areas, but there's a very well-known uh, movie theater here nearby that's outdoors. Which I haven't been there yet, but maybe I'll go. Oh yeah, Panagiotis did send me a, a list. Panagiotis was so kind to send me a huge list. So yes, Panagiotis has said that there is a McDonald's, a Greek McDonald's called Goodies. Goodies. Mehenemet, mm. nice to see you. I was introduced to baklava from a girl in the sixth grade who had a pool party, park luck, and she brought it. Was she Greek? The Greek version of Starbucks is called Gregory's. Gregory's is a Greek company? Really? I did not know that. That's in New York. If anyone can confirm. But Coffee Island definitely is a Greek company and it's really delicious. I tried Gregory's in New York. Not so delicious. Not so delicious. Gregory's is not better than Starbucks, I would say. You make us all hungry. Vesalius, yes, Gregory's. Gregory's, yes. Is Gregory's Greek? Martin asks, when do I travel to Santorini? That is on Thursday. Thursday morning, I go to Santorini, the honeymoon capital of the world. So excited. All right. So we got the final dish on today's menu. That gyro was good and I gobbled it up. I still have more of the fried cheese. I'm not a big fan of cheese. Though I do really like a good goat or cheap cheese, so I really do appreciate this, but it's a bit full. So let me know if the cat will eat some cheese. But we have the final, final dish of today's live video. The baklava. Oh yeah. Mmm, smells very sweet, very honey. They put some cinnamon or some nutmeg on it on the top. Lots of cinnamon used here in Greece, what I've noticed, which is very interesting. This is a baklava not made with pistachio, pistachios as you're used to in the US, which comes more from an Arab or Middle Eastern influence. The Turks also use a pistachio. This one is instead made with walnut. 
So a baklava in Greece. Straight up. Oh, looks like a lot of walnuts. Yes, I'm gonna get a lot of pro protein over here. Matt says we're going Santorini on this Thursday. Yes, I hope you packed lightly because you got fit into my backpack. So do pack lightly. Maybe it isn't too sweet. Let's see. In the U.S., you can run at the danger of a baklava being way too sweet. Especially if they use processed honey. I know it's, I noticed the same thing in Turkey. Turkey had some great baklava when I visited it. Um, I did not do videos back then because that was uh, 2015 as well. Um, but when I visited it, the baklava, it was great baklava. Really high end, really well done. Some baklava vendors were doing this for generations and they mastered the craft and they were all amazing. But then there was baklava that was very processed and it was extremely sweet and they don't like it too much. Same thing with uh, the US. We'll see. Show this out. This is not a baklava specialty shop so my expectations are not high. I'm not going to like a, a specialty bakery by no means. Um, this is just a Euro shop and they just happen to have some baklava. Mm. Wow! Not sweet, not super sweet. Perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced baklava. I am. I'm really surprised. I was uh, I was already kind of bracing myself for like, oh my god, it's gonna be rushed with sugar. But no, it has more cinnamon and just um, the it's drenched in honey, but just like the right amount of honey or whatever honey they're using is actually really, really good. Wow, great baklava. The walnuts are a little bit more crunchier than you would have, or a little bit more. It has it's like a crunchiness that's a little bit more crumbly. If anyone knows a good adjective. Hard to describe, but walnuts have a different texture, more like a bark texture than uh, the kind of nuttiness of a pistachio. So it has a different texture, and, but it is not super sweet. I really like this. Mmm. Mmm. Definitely has walnuts up the wazoo. As we say in America, let me know if there's a Greek version of that. Let me know if there's a Greek version of saying it has an insane amount of something. Mm. Wow! I am stunned. Absolutely stunned. I could eat this, the entire thing. Stunned, to be honest, especially since we're a, a gyro shop. I was expecting a more like processed, super sugary baklava, but we actually really good got a good balanced baklava. Really good. Look at the guy shredding the meat. Yes, indeed he is right behind me. Yeah, is the guy behind you shaving the lamb? Not lamb. It's not Middle Eastern. Nor is it Turkish it's pork, pork here. But in Turkey, since it's mostly a Muslim country, they don't use pork for their uh, version of the gyro, which is the kebab or the donor. They use, or the shawarma, they use lamb. That's the difference. Now I have to go eat again. So I recommend this place. I'm gonna ask the dude, how do I pronounce it? So I can say how No, it doesn't have too many layers as well, so you're mostly eating an insane amount of nuts. Whoa. 
tell you. On the drill, this is pork and chicken. Yeah, chicken is also there. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna see if um, one of the guys pass by. So I can ask him how to pronounce the name of the location. Feel free to ask any last remaining questions. Ask any questions you would like about the food or about my experience with the food here, and I'll be happy to answer it for five more minutes as I inquire on how to pronounce the name of this place. But I'll show you their website. It's right across the main strip, right next to the entrance of the Roman Agora. There's a long strip of restaurants. So let me show you right now. What's the rating, Babu? I do not rate food. Only benches. Have you tried Slovakia yet? Panajotas, you know what? I've uh, had a bunch of Slovakia in my life in New York, but no, I haven't tried it here in Greece. Do you recommend it? So this is the area we're in. Lots of seating. I just sat where I can have a little bit more privacy while doing live streaming. And this is the long strip. Very beautiful to walk even at night. Uh, the restaurant I did before the Odis was actually right next door. Nina, there is chicken gyros. It's pork or chicken. Lamb isn't really a thing here in Greece. Not that much room I've seen. So chicken or pork. Lamb, more of a Turkish thing. My man, keep on rocking at this, says BZ. We'll do, BZ. No caps, though, but we'll do. When are you visiting Atlantis? This Thursday, I'll be going to Atlantis. Ariel, so happy to join you on the adventure. It says, um, Sandra. Hey, excuse me, how do I pronounce the name of the restaurant? Giristrula. Grilistura. Yeah. Oh, Grilistura. Grilistura. Thank you so much. What's the name again? Thysia Square. Thysia Square. Okay. So, Thysia Square Grilistura. Show it to you. Wow, started quite a while. Yeah, that's traditional Slovakian. I haven't tried it yet. I tried the gyro, it's really good. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Jenny says, Can't wait for Santorini. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in for this live video. On this trip, you look well rested. I am because Greece is more of a late night city, so I've been waking up very late, kind of doing most of the videos later in the day. Queen Mother, yes, very great hospitality here in Greece. Highly recommend uh, going to the restaurants, uh, both the touristy areas and also more of the local areas. There's great hospitality. It's a really a culture of hospitality, I've noticed. You know, it has a different quality to Mexico. Mexico is very cold, drool, and um, very friendly and very polite. Here, not much about the politeness, but it's more kind of the warmth. They bring you in. Both are awesome, but it shows like both cultures are hosp very hospitality cultures. I wouldn't call US a hospitality culture. I mean, people could be friendly in the US, but I wouldn't call it a hospitality culture. Um, but they're different, but they both bring you in. Uh, this one brings you in, in a warm way. Uh, Mexico is more kind of like, hey, like, like being very friendly in a very polite, cordial way, which was also a really awesome thing. As well. So it's awesome to see that contrast of cultures here. Everyone, see you tomorrow again at 6 p.m. Actually, yeah, tomorrow around 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. I'll be going live. And then I will be doing on Tuesday, I'll be doing a day trip to Delphi and Thermopylae, where the Spartans fought. I don't know what the service is going to be in those locations, so I'm going to do my best to do mini live streams, hopefully in each stop. Delphi, Thermopylae, and I think there might be a third stop. So I might do mini live streams. I don't know the time, I can't promise. The day trip is from 8 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. So there's a good chance I go 
live around 6 p.m. Greek time as well with things a little bit earlier. And then uh, Santorini on Thursday. Same time, 6 p.m. Greek time, 11 a.m. New York City time. Everyone, keep being awesome and always keep on this board. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.